Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening for the Power of Informational Interviews webinar. My name is Dr. Mary Catherine Arnold, and I am the Director of Student Affairs here for the South College Online Campus. I will be your host for today's presentation. Before we get started, I would just like to remind everyone that you have all been muted. It's important to note that should you have any questions throughout today's presentation, that you type them into the questions and answers box or the Q&A box that's located either at the top or the bottom of your screen. I'll be sure to set some time aside at the conclusion of this presentation to review all questions and concerns that come through. I also wanted to remind everyone that this presentation is being recorded. So although I hope that everyone has a pen and paper on hand to take some notes throughout the presentation, should you happen to miss any of the information, you will each be able to request a copy of this recording by either emailing me directly or by e emailing me through any of the reminder emails that you received prior to today's session. In addition, I'll be sure that this recording is posted on our YouTube page as well, so that way you can enjoy it and review it whenever you need it. Today's presentation is going to require some participation from you as well, so please just be ready and be prepared to participate, answer some questions, and provide your feedback as we go throughout today's presentation, so we, we can ensure that you are maximizing your efforts and understanding of informational interviews. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and begin discussing the power of informational interviews. A lot of what we're going to be discussing throughout today's presentation is about the basics of informational interviews. Just like with any new concept or any new topic that you may not be very familiar with, it's imp important to first know what an informational interview is and what it's going to really be able to do for you for your career. We'll be able to talk a little bit about how to request an informational interview, as well as what you should be discussing in the informational interviews. The goal is that by the end of today's presentation that you're walking out feeling really confident and sure of yourself so that way you can go ahead and implement these skills right away. We'll also talk a little bit about what to expect during an informational interview, as well as the significance that they're going to hold throughout your job search. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier today, is that we will go ahead and end the, to end the presentation with additional questions that you may think of throughout today's topic and throughout today's presentation. So before we get started, I would just like to take a quick poll. How familiar are you with the concept of informational interviews? So on your screen, you're going to see that you can select either not familiar, slightly familiar, or extremely familiar. All right, so it looks like most of us aren't really very familiar with them, and that's perfectly okay. It looks like some of us may have heard the term before, but we're really not experts at them. And that's really what our goal is of today's presentation is to make you feel like you are each an expert within the topic of informational interviewing. So let's go ahead and jump in and begin discussing exactly what an informational interview is. How do we really define this concept? So at the most basic level, an informational interview is an informal meeting in which a job seeker seeks advice on his or her career, the industry, the corporate culture of a specific company, or anything that they really feel like they need to know in order to be successful with the job search from a current employed professional. This can be also called something like an informational conversation, because at the end of the day, that's exactly what we're doing. The goal of an informational interview, it's not like an interrogation like you typically equate with an interview, but it's actually an informal or it's, it's a little bit of a formal conversation, but it's really to gain, it's a conversation that's going to be informational about that topic between yourself and a current professional of or an employee of a specific organization about that line of work, that industry, or that company. A lot about successfully completing informational interviews is going to stem directly from your networking abilities and focus. So since informational interviews are all about gaining knowledge from current industry professionals, we need to be able and willing to meet with individuals whenever and however they are able. There are a couple of different places that you can search in order to build your network. The first way and probably my personal favorite way is through building con your connections in LinkedIn 
and reaching out to those connections via LinkedIn Messenger. I'm a huge fan of this for a couple of different reasons. The first reason why I prefer this method is because when you reach out through LinkedIn, it is less invasive, especially if you don't happen to already have a relationship with that individual. LinkedIn allows professionals from all over and different backgrounds across the world to connect. This means that you can build your network exponentially. The drawback though to doing something like this is that you probably won't know everyone that you're connecting with prior to connecting with them. Now, I also like this because reaching out on LinkedIn also provides you with a starting point. So just as I mentioned with it being less invasive, there are probably a handful of organizations that may interest you, but you have no clue on who might work for that organization or who to even reach out to in that organization. If that's not the case, you may also run into the situation where you don't know someone who, or you do know someone who knows someone else who might fit exactly what you're looking for. So again, since LinkedIn allows you to connect with individuals who you have never really met before, this will give you that opportunity to do so. And lastly, I really like using LinkedIn because it you because it feels almost endless with all the uses that you can use it for. When you are on this platform, you can not only connect with individuals of interest, but also with professional organizations and follow companies of interest. This means that even when you don't know someone directly, if you are able to meet or connect with someone from either the professional organization or someone who works for that company of interest, this can be that initial step in order to get what you need in to have that initial informational interview. Now, I did briefly mention this next bullet point when we were talking about LinkedIn. I mentioned professional organizations, but you can also look into joining a professional organization on your own. For those of you who do not know really what professional organizations are, they are groups of individuals who are seeking to advance the knowledge of a specific profession or line of work. Typically, you will find individuals with similar interest and growth in a specific industry or line of work that are able and willing to help support one another. So maybe they discuss industry trends and they sometimes work to develop solutions to help the industry survive and grow. With this in mind, there are thousands of different professional organizations out there and pretty much one for every field and sometimes even the subsectors of that specific field. So you also want to keep in mind that with professional organizations, it can be at times located either nationally or locally as well. So that's another reason why and where to go to turn to informational interviews, because you can choose to have it as large of a scope or as small of a scope as you feel like you need. Now, I also really like professional organizations as a good place to start with requesting informational interviews for a couple of different reasons as well. First, they have mixers and social events. Although meeting individuals via online can help for those who are introverted or those who are located far away from a specific geographic location or area, being able to meet people face-to-face -face and in person helps to really increase the chances of you making a positive first impression and increases your chances of having an informational interview right there on the spot or by increasing the chances of being able to schedule one in the future with by and through the exchange of your contact information and their contact information. I also like professional organizations because they have online forums. And when you join them, they typically have access to their online platforms, groups, and websites. This means that built into a lot of these groups, you may be able to find a directory of other professionals with basic contact information, or you may be able to connect with the leaders of the professional organization who can really help you to become engaged and help you to make the connections in order to request informational interviews. Typically include an online presence as well. So especially one in LinkedIn. The last major reason that professional organizations help is because those online forums, those online presence really allows you to go beyond being able to see professionals, but also being able to engage with them on things like their LinkedIn pages and sometimes even joining or following their LinkedIn pages without necessarily being a member and paying for that membership. Now, you would also be surprised at how many alumni are always willing to help their peers and classmates. Alumni can be a great source to locate additional information and to learn more about the beginnings of a career progression. 
To help you with locating alumni, try following South College on LinkedIn and also try reaching out to either the new alumni portal that will be launching in a couple of months or via emails and contact information that you've exchanged throughout your classes. You can also look at volunteering as a way to request informational interviews. I know that some of us attending tonight's session may have lots of experience in the field or may know of many individuals working in that specific field of interest. However, I also know that there are some of us here today who may not know those other individuals that they can connect with. So volunteering really comes into play when it's in those environments where you don't really have prior connections or prior established connections. When you volunteer for an organization in your field, you are able to network right away and begin to meet the necessary individuals who would be able to give you a great informational interview. Similar, when you are joining, like similar to when you're joining those professional organizations, volunteering is a great way to make that first great impression because professionals in your industry are going to be there and you're going to be able to work with them and they're going to be able to see your work ethic and everything that you pretty much have to offer. This will make it them more inclined to accept an informational interview with you and also helps to eliminate any of that pushback that you might see with requesting informational interviews electronically. And then lastly, don't forget your face-to-face -face visits with companies as well. Although I recognize that right now, especially due to COVID-19, this might not be the best thing or really possible for you to do at this moment. It is still something that you don't want to give or you don't want to forget to implement. Again, when individuals have the chance to meet you face to face, they tend to feel worse about rejecting you or rejecting your request for an informational interview because it's not as easy to do as when you're hiding behind a screen. So once you've connected with the individuals, you may be thinking, well, now what do I do to actually request that informational interview? Before jumping right to the request for an informational interview, there are a couple of things that you wanna find out about that individual who you plan on asking for the interview with. These include, you wanna find out the current position title of that, that person, the current organization of where they work, their years of experience, and just some general background and career progression information. Although you don't need to know all of the details about this individual, when you have an idea of this individual's past, present, and maybe even future goals, you will find that this will help you to guide your interview with that individual to find out about how to maximize that information that you receive. Remember, you want your interview to classify what you can do to get into the field and break out as a professional in that industry. In order to successfully do that, you will need to find out about a couple of different um, individuals' backgrounds and really see how they got to where they are today. When you have an idea of how that person's career has progressed, you will be able to better guide the conversation and get a clear understanding that you can use then to compare and contrast to others as well. Now let's talk about how you might ask in both a face-to-face -face setting and a virtual setting. So in a face-to-face -face setting, you're just going to start off with your basic introduction. Be like, hello, my name is Mary Catherine Arnold and wait for them to introduce themselves to you. At that point in time, you're just going to start with a basic conversation to identify your connections background. So asking him or her a little bit more about what they've done, um, a little bit about maybe what brings them to that event or what brings them into where they currently are in their career. After you know a little bit about that individual and that face-to-face -face interaction, you're going to explain a little bit about your interests. Don't go super into detail, but give them a little bit of a background. Maybe you're a current student, you're gonna be graduating soon. You wanted to start getting some information about this career field because you think you might be interested in it. Whatever it may be, you still wanna give them just a little bit of, of pieces of information about yourself. Make it very conversational, make it seem like it's flowing naturally. And then once you've introduced yourself at that point in time, you can say, well, you know, it's really interesting because after hearing a little bit about what brings you here, I think that you have a ton of unique perspectives or you have information that you could offer to me that would be beneficial. And at that point in time, you can then request an informational interview. Virtually, we're doing pretty much the same type of things, but there's a couple of extra steps and some steps that we can kind of skip over. 
So when we're connecting with the individual virtually, we will do that again, probably through like LinkedIn is my favorite way personally, but we'll make sure that we're either sending them an email or a message that's going to state a lot of what we stated in that face-to-face -face conversation. So we're gonna state just an introduction of who we are, explain our current situation as to what we're seeking, and then also talking a little bit about some of the characteristics of that individual that correlates with your interests. So talking to that individual about, I noticed X, Y, and Z about your background, I would love to learn more. And then it makes it into an easy transition into requesting for that informational interview. So let's talk a little bit more into what you can specifically say. I'm going to really skip the example of discussing in depth the process of requesting that informational interview in a face-to-face -face setting with an individual, as it really should be something that's just going to flow natural. And it's really hard to kind of give you that mock-up here in today's session. But the one thing that I do really want to state about when requesting an informational interview in a face-to-face -face setting is that you want to remain professional and be sure to compliment and have built a decent connection with that individual before you're asking for that interview. Don't let the very first thing that comes out of your mouth be something like, it's so nice to meet you. Would you want to sit down and have an informational interview with me? No, we don't want to do that. That's too aggressive. What we want to do is instead take the conversation and compliment the individual on something that he or she has mentioned and say something like, wow, it sounds like you have had quite a lot. Um, you've had quite the career. You've had a lot of accomplishments in your career. I would love to learn more about how you got to this stage and would love if you could meet up with me over lunch so that I can pick your brain and get some tips on how I can have similar success. Doing it this way in a face-to-face -face setting is at the end of the day going to help you to focus on building the rapport and the relationship first before just jumping right in and, and showing what your true objectives are of that conversation. So really it's that building, that rapport, that relationship that we're focusing on first. And that brings us to the discussion on how to request it virtually. So on your screen, you're going to see an example of how you can phrase your message to an individual to request an informational interview in that virtual environment. Again, as we mentioned on the previous slide, you will see that there is a brief introduction about who you are. You are mentioning something specific that you've discovered about that individual that made you want to reach out to that individual. And you're mentioning something specific that you're seeking, such as those top skills for a specific type of position. In addition, what you're seeing is that you're also going to compliment the individual. So again, even in our face-to-face -face versus our virtual, compliments are going to be huge. So that way you're showing courtesy regarding that individual's time. And you're also showing that you respect the individual for the accomplishments that they've made and that they've been able to have. And finally, we're closing it up, understanding that I understand that you must be really busy. I respect that. It's one of the things that I think I admire about you, you know, nothing over the top, but we're essentially demonstrating that any time that that individual can give to us, we are going to embrace and we're going to really be appreciative of that time. So once you have scheduled the informational interview, you always want to go into it prepared. So just as you would when going into a job interview, you want to have that same sense of preparedness. Of course, in this role, you're going to be the one that's asking the individual all about his or her experience instead of just being asked those questions. But you still want to remember that you need to be prepared to guide the discussion and the questions that you may have. So what are some of the questions that you should be asking in an informational interview? Let's take a look at some of the questions that you can ask. So the first question that you can always start with is what are some of the main responsibilities that you hold or that you are expected to complete as a whatever that person's job title is? You also can, can ask about the typical day or the week. You know, what is it something, what is it that you can expect when working in this type of role? So finding out a little bit more about that individual's responsibilities, the day-to-day -day duties, the things that they're expected to do, it really helps to provide context to you around what you could expect in a similar role. You also might want to ask, well, how did you get to where you are? Every individual and every professional, even if they're at the same exact level, they're going to have a very different career path from someone else who's in that same exact level. So it's important to gain some 
ideas and some information about how those individuals are progressing to where they are. Um, because that will show you the different paths that you can take as a professional as well. You also might be curious to know a little bit about what they like the most and the least about their line of work. I can tell you no matter how much I love my job, there are things in my job that I wish I could just never have to touch again. Um, and it's going to be the same for every single individual. So really when you're asking these types of questions, you're trying to gain more information about what you can maybe expect and see if your interests kind of align with that other in individual's interest. You also might be curious to know about things like work-life balance. So asking a question such as, how does your job affect your lifestyle could be huge. Maybe I'm in a job that I'm expected to work crazy hours. Maybe I'm expected to work not only my normal, you know, nine to five hours, but also beyond that. Maybe I'm expected to do late night webinars. Maybe I'm expected to do and host late night meetings with clients. Whatever it may be, I want to know, are my nights, are my weekends going to potentially be consumed by my work? Because I need to make sure that my family, my friends, my, the individuals that are in my personal life are ready and willing to handle those same types of situations. You also might want to ask what kinds of accomplishments or skills tend to be valued for this position. So asking a question like this is you having that opportunity to think about the things that you currently do in your current roles or your past experiences and being able to see, well, if I was to go into an interview tomorrow for the same type of job, what are some of the things that I need to make sure I'm showcasing that I've done in my prior experiences so that way I can build my value as and make myself be viewed as the most desired candidate available. You also might ask, well, how do most individuals get started with their career in this field? Again, everyone's going to have a different background and a different history, but a lot of times we all tend to start in a very similar position. And then a lot of times it depends on our interest and how our interests grow and maybe our managers or our teams. Um, so a lot of the, a lot of times, you know, the paths that we take to get to where we end up being are very different, but a lot of times your entry level positions will all be very similar types of roles that will help you to get that foundation. So if you know that you one day want to be an upper executive, then you need to know where's the best place for me to start in my career right now. So that way in the next 10, 15 years, I'm going to be where I want to be. Also, maybe asking, well, what steps do you recommend that I take for to prepare for this field? So again, what do I need to do so that way I can start preparing to be successful in my desired direction that I want to take the career? Maybe asking, well, what are the most effective strategies for seeking a position in this field or for seeking X, Y, and Z position? You know, was there something, is there a specific resource that you think would be beneficial for me to use to get here? Um, you know, what types of steps maybe can I take with networking? What other things can I do to maximize my chances of success? Maybe asking if you could do it all over again, would you choose the same path for yourself? If not, what would you change? Um, finding out, you know, what did they like about how they got to where they are? Is Are they actually in where they wanted to be? Um, and if not, what can you do differently? And what advice would you give to someone who is considering this type of job or field? So again, finding out more information that you're not going to find from a job description, but that you're only going to find from the lived experiences of someone else. And then even asking a question, was there anyone who influenced you to pursue this line of work? If so, would I be able to possibly connect with that individual? So who inspired them? Was there someone that gave them this type of guidance that you're trying to get? If there was, trying to see if you can use their network to help benefit you and your networking, um, your networking steps and initiatives. But just as with anything that is new to us, it is also helpful to know what to expect when we're walking into a new situation and experience. So this is really going to be what's going to help us to feel confident and comfortable with the exchange that we're going to experience during an informational interview. So what should you really expect when going through and scheduling an informational interview? In order to answer that question, you want to first make sure that you should be expecting, um, you want to know what you should be expecting out of it and what you should not be expecting out of it. So for starters, informational interviews are information sessions. They are just that. They are there to provide you with information. 
This session is going to be what you use to gain a thorough understanding of the careers, line of work, job duties, and day-to-day -day expectations in a specific role or company. You also wanna remember that informational interviews are there to also help you with your networking initiatives. Don't forget that networking is the number one way that individuals secure employment. Without networking, you could be looking at months or even years to locate that next position. You also wanna remember that informational interviews are, help, are there to help you balance and manage your first impressions that others are going to get when they first meet you. Since it is still like an interview, you have the chance to make a good and a strong first impression by showing your preparedness, your eagerness, and willingness to learn, as well as your passion for that field. But lastly, remember and expect that when going through informational interviews, it's a numbers game. That means that not everyone you connect with will be willing or able to participate in an informational interview. Although I wish I, I wish that everyone here could be as helpful as possible in, in the professional world. And I understand that the ways that an informational interview can help everyone is just astronomical. The, at the end of the day, we can't force everyone to participate. And in addition, we can't ensure that everyone who will be willing to participate is going to be a good informational interview participant. So you really wanna go in with the expectations that you're probably gonna to need to do a handful of them or a couple of them before you really get what you're looking for. Along with what to expect, there are some things to remember of what informational interviews are not. So first remember that they will be not, first remember that they will not be a tool to necessarily locate job openings. Sure, you might be able to create one or two really good connections with individuals who currently work in either the field or an organization that interest you, but your goal or your expectation walking into an informational interview should not be to locate a new job opening. Similarly, don't expect a job offer. Again, this is more of a networking and researching tool and less of a job searching tool. Yes, it absolutely does help you with the job search because you'll expand upon your knowledge and your network, but its primary objective is for you to become more knowledgeable about that field and what you can do to find success in similar types of roles or in that specific industry or organization. When you go into an informational interview, you also go in, you need to go in with a realistic expectation that you are not going to walk out with an invitation for an interview. Interviews are done when individuals have applied to a position for a company or if the company is thinking of a specific individual for an upcoming position. When you are looking at informational interviews, you need to remember that these individuals may not even be hiring managers or number two, they may not even have openings in their company, even if they are hiring manager. So again, this is just for you to see what types of skills you can learn and should be showcasing on things like your resumes during your interviews. Every connection to participate in an informational interview is one thing that you don't want to expect as well. Remember, it's a numbers game, right? So this goes back to just what to expect, but this mirrors that it is crucial for you to realize that and fully comprehend that although we want everyone to participate, they're not always going to participate. And you can just take whatever that individual is saying respectfully and accept their answer to be unwilling to participate and move on and find the next individual who is. So at the end of the day, you may be thinking, well, why are informational interviews so significant? How are they actually going to help me with my job search? First, the one thing that you're going to see is that they're a way for you to obtain firsthand relevant information about the realities of working within that particular field, industry, or position. When you are speaking to someone and gaining that firsthand experience, this information is not always readily going to be available online. You really get the chance to understand and learn about the inner workings of an organization or even the truth behind different careers. Not all careers, not all organizations are rain, rainbows and gumdrops as we like to think. Um, you know, a lot of times they have some ugliness to them too. 
And informational interviews are a great way to kind of get some of that ugliness and understand those ugliness. They also assist you with researching careers. So there are so many different career paths that are out there. And many of these we don't even know about or consider. When we are going through informational interviews, we are able to be exposed to more of these directions that we were just unaware of or uneducated on. You're also going to see that they provide tips and insider knowledge. This is similar with the obtaining the firsthand relevant information regarding a career. But what you will find is that you will also feel more prepared and you'll learn more about landing your first career position from these informational interviews. As we discussed with the questions that you can ask during an informational interview, you really can learn about the inner workings of that specific company, position, and the industry. And in addition, it also allows you to learn what it's like in a specific organization. Again, that firsthand information, it is so important because you get to learn what it's specifically like to work for that specific company. Sure, you can go and read about an organization and reviews from places like your indeed.com or glassdoor.com. But most of these companies are, and most of these are going to be pretty negative because a lot of times they're from people who have left that employer. And generally speaking, if we leave an employer, it tends to be because we are just very unhappy with them. When you do informational interviews, you may find out more information about that company's reputation from individuals who have been seeking to leave that organization or the reverse, you may even find what people absolutely love that keep them to stay there. Yes, it's going to differ for every single individual because everyone is like a snowflake, right? We're all unique. But at the end of the day, when we are talking about what that company is like, you're going to be able to learn from other individuals, some who may be like you and have the same priorities of you, as you do in life and others who are completely different. And that's going to allow you to get more of that insider information so that now you can make a more educated decision as to how you would like to proceed and move forward in the future. And then you're also going to see that it's going to initiate those professional relationships, expanding your network. Don't forget that at the end of the day, you benefit from informational interviews because you are building and expanding upon your network with individuals who are in your desired career field. These are people who you may even work for at one day and may work for in the future or even work with. So they can forward you job leads and they can end up helping you in just an exponential way with your job search down the road. It's all depending about how we leave that informational interview and how we make our appearance and our first impressions during those informational interviews. So now at this point, you should feel pretty prepared and confident with how informational interviews can help and aid you in your job search. But before you go out and start requesting these, here are some additional tips that I want to make sure that you have in your mind and that you're keeping in your mind. So be sure to reach out to many individuals often, especially when you are first starting with scheduling and securing informational interviews. Be sure not to limit yourself. When we don't reach out to many individuals or many people often, we are just limiting our knowledge and our ability to expand our network, which will ultimately only hurt us in the job search. Don't forget to also spend time researching both the individual who you will be meeting with and the company prior to that informational interview. This will help you to develop questions that you want to ask and also appear as extremely professional, well put together, organized, and um, a planner. These are all going to help you to make that really strong first impression. And that brings us to our next point, which is don't forget to plan ahead. Again, prior to the informational interview, you want to have a handful of questions that you would like to ask that individual. I typically encourage in the at the least, at least five. Do be sure that you are planning your time accordingly. This means that whenever you schedule the informational interview, if you are scheduled, if you've scheduled it within a certain amount of time, make sure that you have the appropriate amount of questions that should be answered within that amount of time. We want to make sure that we are prioritizing our questions and creating a sense of urgency around the ones that we absolutely feel like we need to have answered. But we also want to be cognizant that we're not going over that person's time and that person's availability. Remember, your interviewer is going out of their way and doing this out of the graciousness of his or her heart and most likely probably has other things that that, that person needs to do and needs to complete outside of this type of interaction and relationship. 
So we wanna always keep that in mind when moving forward. That first impression also does come down to how we dress in our attire and our entire appearance when we're going into these informational interviews. No, you don't have to be prepared in a full-blown suit, but don't wear your PJs out either. Dress accordingly to the setting that you plan on meeting the individual and according to the level of the professionalism that you're looking to obtain or showcase through that interaction. Try to be anywhere dressed from your business casual to the upper end of casual. This means no holes in your clothing, no types of sweats, no sweatshirts, sweatpants, no leggings, whatever it may be that we're, we're not going for athleisure wear. Um, you know, we're going for that more professional, refined look. And then I'm also going to go back to the significance of time and being respectful and cur courteous of your interviewer's time. Don't beat around the bush. Be confident in what you are curious to learn about and jump right in. Of course, have the pleasantries at the beginning, but avoid a lot of the small talk and stay focused on what you need to accomplish within the interview. And then I've also been over this a handful of times, but again, avoid asking at all costs for a job. The individual you're meeting with most likely does not have a job simply to hand out to you. And even if he or she does, um, they're not probably going to be likely to just give it to you without having a good understanding of who you are first as a professional and making sure that you would be a good fit for that type of position. Now, I also briefly mentioned this one at the end of the potential questions that you could ask during the informational interview, but don't forget to also ask for referrals. The one thing I do want to cautious you and, be, and caution you on is be careful about how you phrase this. Don't the one thing you don't want to come across to this individual is thinking that this individual wasn't influential enough to help you or that this in, this individual didn't give you enough good guidance. Um, you want to do and ask for referrals in a way that helps to show how impressed you are with that candidate and or how impressed you are with that interviewer and in a way that's going to pretty much compliment them more than anything else. And then don't forget to follow up with a thank you card or an email. It's always really important that you are thank thanking that individual because it's also going to help you with staying connected and keeping that individual informed about your, about your progress as well as expressing gratitude for that individual's time. Remember that there are humans too. They probably have families and friends and lives outside of work and professional development as well. But thanking them for their time is the least that you can do because it shows that you respect their authority and you respect everything that they are giving and doing for you. So hopefully now you have a thorough understanding of the power of informational interviews. I would say, you know, be sure to utilize the information that was presented to you in this presentation, but also to reach out to your career services representative for more information and a review of your LinkedIn profile. You may also find it helpful to review the career services workbook that's located in your library underneath the career resources tab in the research guides tab. But there are so many tools and resources that are out here and we all wanna see you be successful. So be sure to reach out to us here in South College Career Services. That way we can guide you and provide you with specifically what type of information and resources might be the most beneficial and most helpful for you. But before we end today's session, I would just like to open up the floor for any of those questions and concerns that have come in at this point in time. So give me one moment, let me pull up those questions and we'll go ahead and we'll start answering them for you. So I see that my first question is how many informational interviews do you suggest that I do? Um, I think that it really comes down to a personal feeling of how, you fe how confident you feel and if you feel like you have a good idea for your career progression and career development. You may feel like you need a lot more than, than others. I would say though, typically to get a good feel for what you're going to be asking and how these are going to unfold, I would typically say try to do about three um, at a minimum because three is really going to be able to help you to better gauge your feelings on that specific line of work and that specific type of company or that specific company or industry. The next question is, what type of information should I include in my follow-up besides a thank you? 
Um, so I think, you know, that's a really great question. I think, you know, you definitely want to include that thank you and, and the respect for the time. But also, if you have any additional questions you that you weren't able to think of or any questions that you weren't able to get to in, in that conversation, I think at that point in time, it's a good time for you to ask those questions. You also want to follow up um, with and, and make sure that you have a follow up plan or contact strategy that was listed in that you guys established from your meeting that you're kind of reiterating in your thank you, making sure that they have your contact information, maybe even like a summary of what you discussed. Um, the one thing to keep in mind, though, you don't want your thank you note or thank you card to be a ton of information. You want it to be enough information just to kind of remind them of what you, um, a little bit easier of what to, what you found helpful, um, what you might feel like you need to know. Just make sure that you're not seeming overly demanding. The next question I see is, are there any strategies that you would recommend me to stay organized when reaching out and completing informational interviews? Um, I think this is going to be a big proponent of keeping, I, I'm a big proponent, I should say, of keeping spreadsheets. Um, some people like to do Rolodexes. Other people like to just keep a notebook on hand. Um, some people like to keep things in electronic email address books. Whatever you choose to do, it's really up to you. There's no right or wrong way. I mean, staying organized is definitely a big component into this. Just be consistent in whatever system that you end up using. Um, know that it can evolve, but making sure that however it evolves that you're remaining consistent with that evolution as well. And then it looks like our last question is, do you recommend paying for the premium LinkedIn account in order to find people to connect with? Um, I don't really think that that's necessary. If you're really super desperate or if you're really going to be spending a lot of time doing these efforts, then maybe. Um, but the premium LinkedIn account can be fairly expensive and you can get a lot of the same great benefits from just the free version. Um, yes, there are some extended applications that you can have by going into the premium, but I think that unless it's part of something that you're going to be using every single day, every you know regularly, um, that I would be afraid that it might, that you might not necessarily see the rewards of paying for it at that point in time. All right, well, that looks like that's all the questions that we have today. I wanna thank you all for attending today's session. I hope that you found this information to be beneficial, but should you run into any additional questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to let me know. I provided my contact information on this slide for you. So please feel free to give me a call or send me an email with what, anything else that you may think of or any additional guidance that you may need. Thank you everyone once again for attending and I hope that you have a wonderful evening.